In this video, we're going to focus on solving a two-stage rocket problem. So let's begin. A rocket accelerates upward at 15 meters per second squared for 10 seconds, starting from rest. After 10 seconds, the engine cuts off. What is the maximum height the rocket will achieve? And what is the rocket's total flight time? So let's draw a picture. Let's say this is the rocket. Okay, that doesn't look like a rocket. Let's draw a better picture. All right, let's say that's the rocket. It's going to go up. And then once the engine's cut off, it will still go up. And then eventually it's going to fall back down to the ground. And we'll say this is the ground level. Now, what I'd like to do is I'd like to label key points in the rocket's trajectory. So we'll call this point A. That's where it begins to take off from rest. Point B is when the engines will cut off. Point C will be where it reaches its maximum height. And point D is when it's going to return to the ground. So right now at point A, the rocket is starting from rest, which means its vertical velocity is zero at point A. We don't know what it is at point B, but at point C, the rocket's vertical velocity will be zero because it's not going up anymore. Now, between points A and B, we know the rocket has an upward acceleration in the y direction of 10 meters, I mean 15 meters per second squared. Now, at point B, when the engines, when it cuts off, the rocket will be in free fall. It's going to have upward velocity, but now it's under the influence of gravity. So its acceleration will now be negative 9.8. So that's going to be the case between points B and C, and also between C and D, which we'll talk about later. Right now, we need to calculate the maximum height the rocket will achieve. So we need to find the displacement between points A and C. But it's easier if we break it up into point, uh, different parts. So let's focus on finding the vertical displacement between point A and B. Now, how can we do that? Well, first, let's make a list of the kinematic equations that may be useful to us in this problem. So the first equation is V final is equal to V initial plus AT. And then we have this equation, V final squared is equal to V initial squared plus two AD. And then we have displacement is equal to V initial T plus one half AT squared. And then there's also displacement is equal to the average velocity, which is the initial plus the final divided by two multiplied by time, or D equals VT. So these equations work if the object is under constant acceleration. Now, I wanna take a minute to show you where you can quickly find my final exam videos, including physics. So if you type in Organic Chemistry Tutor in the YouTube search bar, and then click on my channel and go to the community tab, you'll find a list of final exam videos that I have. Pre-algebra, algebra, geometry, trig, pre-cal, calc one, calc two, and this one, physics, final exam. Now the free version is about two hours long and there's about 40 questions in this video. But if you scroll down, you can get access to the full length version of my physics final exam review, which is six hours and about a hundred questions. You can access it on Patreon or in my YouTube membership program. So feel free to take a look at that when you get a chance. And I recommend you get an early start on these videos because they're very long. Now going from A to B, what is the displacement? What equation can we use to find the displacement? 
right now we only have two things the upward acceleration the initial velocity and we also have the time between points A and B so we can put that here it takes 10 seconds for the rocket to go from A to B so what equation can we use to find the displacement we could use this equation we know the initial speed or initial velocity we know the time and the acceleration So V initial in the Y direction is zero plus one half. The acceleration is 15 and then T squared, T is 10. 10 squared is 100, half of 100 is 50 and 50 times 15, 50 times 10 is 500, 50 times five is gonna be half of that, which is 250. So 500 plus 250 is 750. So the vertical displacement or the distance between A and B is 750 meters. The displacement is positive because as you go from A to B, you're going upward in the Y direction. Now, what is the displacement from B to C? In order to find that, we need to find something else at point B. We need to find the vertical velocity of the rocket at point B, and we could use this equation to do that. So going from A to B, we have V final is equal to V initial plus AT. So V initial is the velocity at A. The vertical velocity at A is zero. The acceleration is still 15 meters per second squared. The time is 10 seconds. So 15 times 10 is 150 meters per second. So that is the, ver the vertical velocity at point B. It's 150 meters per second. Now, let's shift our focus to the second segment, point B to C. So at point B, the initial velocity is 150. At point C, the final velocity is zero. Now between points B and C, including those points, the acceleration is negative 9.8. The rocket is under free fall, even though it's going upward. It's now only under the influence of gravity, which makes it a projectile. So with the initial velocity, the final velocity, and the acceleration, which of these four formulas on the right will help us to find the displacement? We could use this one to find it because we don't know the time between points B and C. So we have V final squared is equal to V initial squared plus 2AD. So at point C, the final vertical velocity is zero at point B, the initial vertical velocity is 150. The vertical acceleration is negative 9.8, and we're looking for the displacement. I'm going to move 150 squared to the other side. So it's going to be negative 150 squared. And then I'm going to divide it by 2 times negative 9.8, which is negative 19.6 that will give us the displacement so negative 150 squared divided by negative 19.6 and it's 1147.959 so I'm going to round that to 1148 and keep in mind in terms of why it's positive the rocket is going upward as we move from point B to point C in its trajectory so that's why we have a positive vertical displacement. So now we have the answer for part A. What is the maximum height the rocket will achieve? So basically, what's the displacement from point A to point C? 
the displacement from point A to point C is the sum of these two displacements. So it's 750 plus 1148. So the maximum height is 1,898, which I'm just going to write it over here. And this is rounded to the nearest whole number. So that's the final answer for part A. Now, part B, what is the rocket's total flight time? What we need to do is find the rocket's flight time for each individual part. We have the time from A to B. We need to find the time from B to C and then add that with the time from C to D. So how can we find the time it takes for the rocket to go from B to C? What equation do we need to use? Well, we could use this equation. V final is equal to V initial plus AT. At point C, the final velocity is zero. At point A, it's 150. The acceleration is negative 9.8. And so we can calculate the time. So moving 150 to the other side, it's going to be negative 150. And dividing that by negative 9.8, we'll have this. And that will give us a time. The two negative signs will cancel, so it's simply 150 divided by 9.8. And that will give us a time of 15.3 seconds. All right, so let's save that answer somewhere. So now let's focus on the third segment of the problem, point C to point D. We want to find the time it takes for the rocket to fall from point C to the ground at point D. How can we do that? So we have the initial velocity. At point C, it's still zero. Now between C and D, the acceleration will be negative 9.8. We also have the displacement from C to D, which is the maximum height. So going from A to C, the displacement is positive 1898. But going from C to D, we're going down towards in the negative y direction. So the displacement is going to be negative 1898. And we're trying to find the time. We don't have the final velocity, nor do we need to find it. We could if we want to. So how can we find the time with this information? This is probably going to be the easiest equation to use because the initial velocity is zero and we can avoid the use of the quadratic formula. So displacement is going to be v initial t plus one half at squared. So the displacement in the y direction is negative 1898 V initial is 0, A is negative 9.8, and we could solve for T squared. So half of 9.8 is 4.9. Negative 1898 divided by negative 4.9, that's going to be positive 387.34694 if you round it and that equals t squared. So now we could take the square root of those two numbers and that will give us the time from c to d which is 19.68 seconds. So to calculate the total time we can add up everything. So going from a to b it took the rocket 10 seconds to do that. Going from b to c it took the rocket 15.3 seconds to make that transition. And going from C to D, it took the rocket 19.68 seconds to fall back down from its maximum height. So going from A to D, 
we could simply add those four numbers. So 10 plus 15.3 plus 19.68, that's 44.98, but we can round that to, we could say approximately 45 seconds. So that is the rocket's total flight time. Now we can add an additional question if we want to. For instance, what is the final velocity of the rocket before it hits the ground? So in order to get that answer, we could use this equation or we could use this one. Let's use the first one since we know the time it goes from C to D. So first, let's define the initial point and the final point. So the initial point will be point C, the final point will be point D. So at point C, we have an initial velocity of zero. We have the acceleration, we have the displacement. We also have the time from point C to point D. And our goal is to find the final velocity at point D. So we could use this one. The initial is zero, the acceleration is negative 9.8, and the time is 19.68 seconds. So this will give us negative 192.864, or let's just round it to 0.9 meters per second. So this is the vertical velocity before it hits the ground. And it makes sense why it's negative because the rocket is going down in the negative y direction. So its vertical velocity is negative. Now you have to be careful with this question. So if the question asks you, let's say part C, what is the final velocity of the rocket before it hits the ground? The answer is negative 192.96. But if the question asks, what is the final speed of the rocket or how fast was the rocket going before it hits the ground? Those two questions are asking about its speed and speed is always positive. So the answer will be positive 192.9 meters per second. So be careful with the way the question is worded. If it's asking for velocity, it could be positive or negative depending on the direction. If it's going up, positive. If it's going down, negative. But if it's asking you, you know, what's the final speed or how fast is the rocket going before it hits the ground, then it's always going to be a positive answer. So that's it for this video. Hopefully it gave you some good insight into how to solve these types of problems. And I find it really helpful to really break down a kinematics problem in different parts. Because if you could define each point and write down the information that corresponds to each segment of the problem, it makes it a lot easier to solve these types of problems.